Uh, so Ellen Chapman from Tricklenet, uh, which is a fabulous little business near Nocton Heath in Lincolnshire, uh, as we worked out over lunch about 14 minutes from where Michelle lives. Um, Perfect. Ellen, Ellen uh, runs a company called Tricklenet, and they were on the original 10 by 10 pilot program for the accelerator programs that we've then subsequently delivered and developed. And Ellen, I was going to say had the good fortune, but that's absolutely untrue. Ellen um, very deservedly and very successfully won our first ever pitching event. Um, and, and I think it's not unfair to say that at the time of pitching, Ellen wasn't particularly confident about, oh, oh, wow. I think I've got a cat in hell's chance of winning this. I'm really not, you know, I'm really not worthy. I'm in a room full of fabulous businesses. And um, yeah, Michelle was there, it's fair to say, absolutely nailed it. <laughs> and was the unanimous choice of judges and walked away with the prize, the accolade, uh, and a whole load, of, whole load of help and support. So welcome, Ellen. Uh, so just for Ellen's benefit, this is a, this is a version of 10 by 10. So this is a, a variant called Northern Max 3. Uh, so this is for early stage digital technology businesses in the Leeds City region. So unlike the Lincoln model, which was open to all sorts of businesses to apply for, there's, a, there's been a narrowness in that they're not to three years in and around Leeds, Bradford, and the, the kind of broad city region. But conceptually and content-wise, very, very similar. So you, you, you're very welcome. Um, do you want to start, Ellen, by telling us how TrickleNet came about? Because I was talking earlier as part of the pitching workshop about how having a good story and authenticity you know, a, a trigger point to say, wow, something has happened or I've witnessed something and, and this has been my motivation and driver. So you have a fabulous story. So please, please share. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, quite a story. So I, um, I've always been involved with horses for, for many years. Uh, I've, I've worked with horses since I left school um, <clears throat> alongside, alongside other things that I've done as well. Um, and in I had a horse called Solly from Ireland. I, um, I lived in Ireland for a spell and I brought him back to the UK with me. Um, and he was uh, quite a, a characterful horse, let's say. Um, he was uh, a horse who taught me a lot. And in 2010, um, he developed a condition uh, he got very poorly. He got very poorly in the in the early part of that year, and uh, he was a, he, he just hunted. He's he, I hunt with a bloodhound pack. He just hunted his best season. He was lean. He was fit. He was a big horse, um, and the vets were very confused. Nobody could work out what was going on with this horse. Um, some vets thought it was a it, some bizarre arthritic condition or. A, Anyway, the, the, he was misdiagnosed to start with. And my gut feeling was that this horse had a condition called laminitis, which back then um, much less was understood about laminitis. And you certainly wouldn't expect to see it in a big fit horse like this one. Um, but we listened to the vet, which was my, uh, which was my error. I should have gone with my gut feeling. Uh, a second opinion, he, he, he got more poorly and became lame. Uh, and a second opinion uh, confirmed laminitis and then further tests confirmed he had a condition called equine metabolic syndrome, which is very similar to type two diabetes in humans. So he was suffering from insulin resistance. So his insulin was out of control. Um, and in horses, a side effect to, to this condition is, is laminitis. Laminitis is always a symptom. It's always, um, uh, it's always an indication that something else is going wrong, but by the time the horse becomes laminitic, that metabolic crisis has, has, has got quite far already. So he was very, very poorly, um, and he had to go on box rest in his stable. And as you're probably aware, you don't need to be a horsey person to understand that horses are all grazing animals. Um, and even when they're in the stable, they, they still need to graze because they are... And biologically made to digest small amounts of forage constantly um, but you can't do that or you couldn't do that before before trickle net so Sully was uh, he was in in his stable on box rest for for a very long time um, and I tried all sorts of products on the market that would that would feed him his restricted ration because part of the 
part of the solution or trying to reverse the condition he had was all about restricting his sugar intake, which was then obviously restricted diet. Um, so he was getting a rationed amount of forage, but, but as a grazing animal and as a trickle feeder, there was nothing available to trickle feed this small amount of forage to him. So he was eating his forage too quickly. And then he was spending hours and hours and hours in crippling pain standing in his stable. So I couldn't find anything. And I started to think about making something. I knew what I wanted. I knew, I knew what was required to, to, to help trickle feed this horse and help manage his condition. So I looked at various different netting manufacturers. There's very few manufacturers in the UK now. It's all imported. But I looked at lots of different companies and I went to work with a few companies um, on uh, designing products and looking at materials. Solly tested all sorts of materials and all sorts of designs until we eventually landed on, um, on the design, which is it's called our original net. And that is the original product that I designed back then. Um, and it's not changed since. We've changed the rope a couple of times, but the actual design was well tested by him and still works wonderfully today. So Sully tested that product. It, it worked brilliantly well for him, brilliantly well. There, was, there is and was still nothing on the market that can do this as well as this product. Um, unfortunately, Sully was incredibly poorly. And after testing this product and after a few months of, of the trickle net original managing his condition he um we we lost him basically he we made it was a beautiful sunny day like this we'd made a sand pit outside the stable for him so he could he could hobble outside and get some sunshine on his back um and my last memory was last memory of him um my last happy memory was Solly lying down in the sand with the sun on his back um, and then the poor old boy had, had tried to get up um, awkwardly because of his condition, but also he, he'd been in his stable so long. He was so poor, his poor old bones had turned to powder and, and getting up, he shattered his pastern. And so actually throughout that, throughout that period of 10 months when he was on box rest, four times I'd said, I'm going to call the vet tomorrow and put him out of his misery. And four times the following day, I saw some improvement. So I could never, never make that decision, even though I knew how poorly he was. I couldn't make that decision when I could see a fragment of improvement. Um, and in the end, he took the decision out of my hands. Um, and off, uh, off he went, bless him. Um, and then that was obviously very sad, but I, I, knew, I knew I'd been left with a product which had helped him greatly throughout his last months. It had really, really made a significant different, difference in his management, although it's a sad ending for him, but I knew this product could help other horses. So um, the NFU paid out for his, um, his insur the insurance paid out for him. I think they paid out about 2,000, 2,500 pounds. And TrickleNet was started with that money. Um, we bought the first batch of nets, paid for a very, very amateur website uh, and a tiny bit of marketing and within a few weeks we couldn't keep up with the orders and here we are now <laughs> so we, we first met each other as you as you've just reminded me of 2016 so that's four years ago when yes. you were, when you were um, in danger i think is the right word with hindsight of signing an equity investment deal that wouldn't have done you any favors and it was a, a mutual contact of ours a, a good lawyer friend of mine who phoned me up and said <clears throat> doing some work with Ellen, um, you've not met her before, but she's got an equity deal on the table that looks really unfair. Um, would, you be, would you mind coming in and giving her some advice? And the first bit of advice I gave you was tear the damn thing up and don't, don't take their money. Um, what, what, you. what support, <laughs> well, it's all about me, obviously. Um, <laughs> what, support, what support had you had prior to that in terms of business support, advice and guidance? Absolutely not. Um, and, and I'll tell you why, from my perspective, Russell, uh, it, people, people in small businesses just don't know what's available to them. They don't know what's out there. Um, I mean, you guys, Greenborough does incredible work, um, you know, and, and I don't know if you've got a marketing budget, but I hadn't heard of you before, before Ed put me onto you guys. Yeah. Um, and, and since hearing about, since working with you, Russell and, uh, and Michelle, uh, and, and finding 
various avenues of access to all sorts of support. I'm absolutely blown away by the amount of support that's out there. And to this day, since 2016, since meeting you, Russell, I've had huge amounts of support, incredible advice, and it hasn't cost my business a penny, not a penny so far. So um, I will sing your, your praises all day long because you... That's not why we invited you here. But, <laughs> you uh, keep going. You certainly help, help my business uh, to grow. But I, um, I totally understand how because I've been there, how, how starting out as a small business, you, you know, you've got a great idea and you start to build a, a customer base and you can, you know, you see the first signs of that snowball in effect and think, yeah, this is good, but you, you're going to hit certain problems along the way. You, you're bound to, because what I've learned is that um, you might have a wonderful idea. You know, I, I'm great with horses and I'm, I'm, I'm quite good with marketing as well. Um, I'm rubbish with admin, accounts, invoicing, all the, all the boring stuff. There's so many departments in within a business. Um, you're going to hit problems. You're going to hit snags. Um, and you need, you need to get some support to, to grow your business effectively. And it's, it's out there, but you have, to go and, you have to go and look for it. It's not going to come and find you. In my experience, it's not going to come and find you. You have to go and look for it. Okay. Well, as as I said, we didn't we, we didn't invite you here, and this wasn't scripted. But I know, I know. Thank you. Well, I, you know, we'll, we'll, Little free before you. We'll take all the plaudits we can, can't we, Michelle? <laughs> so you 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 applied for the first ten by ten program, and it was a pilot program, and nobody had ever done it before in Lincolnshire, and we weren't quite sure what it was going to look like and how it was going to feel, or who we who we really really wanted to to use. What what prompted you to apply in the first place? Um. Oh gosh, lots of reasons. Firstly, you guys were running it, um, so I trusted it straight away. Uh, I really, I thought the format was fantastic. You know, you you kind of, I thought it was quite clever that you asked us to commit to Mondays, which is usually most people's busiest day. Um, so we had to commit to Mondays, one day a week, um, and so it was it was it was some sort of commitment. Uh, so I had to make some sort of effort and commitment, but equally it was one day a week, so I could fit that in quite nicely. Um, and the the kind of the schedule of support and, and advice and the and the tutoring that you had available was incredible. And then um, and then the mentor that that I got out of it as well, um, Craig Marsh at, uh, at university. Uh, I I wouldn't. I mean, I didn't know at the time of applying that that you would put me in touch with somebody like that, but I just I wouldn't get access to that sort of that level of of advice and and guidance otherwise. And so, yeah, I thought you know you, you've got nothing to lose with these things. You've got absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. So, so with the benefit of eighteen months hindsight, it must be nearly eighteen months hindsight. Which which for you were the best bits? Which, which oh, wow. highlights, obviously, apart from winning, we will come on to that in a bit. <laughs> well, yeah, that was, that was quite good. That was quite good. Um, that yeah, I thought the, <laughs> I, if, everyone who came along and everyone who gave us some tuition and guidance and, and support, um, everyone was so fantastic in saying, here's our contact details. Um, so we got, we got a, we got access to certain courses and information that these people had put together and it was a very condensed version. It was usually a very condensed, intense day, um, which would actually have been probably a week's course. Um, but they crammed it into a day and gave us the, the, the best bits of it, but then also gave us access to the full course and said, here's our, here's our contact details and, and, and just the amount of information that was packed into this into this 10 by 10 I mean it literally was an accelerator it was like wow here's a, a huge shed load of information for you a shed load of contacts for you um, I mean opportunities galore just thrown at you and you do what you want with it um, so it's really difficult to pick the best bits but I'd probably say the networking was fantastic um, meeting people not just not just meeting the, the influential people who can who can help you grow your business but meeting the other small businesses as well um, I'm still in touch with a lot of them and I've, I've, I've worked with with a couple of them since as well um, 
yeah, making friends and, and meeting meeting those small businesses and helping each other on our journeys as well. Because throughout the process, it wasn't, I don't think any of us were, were in it to win it, really. I think we were all in it to learn and, mm -hmm. and, and gain what we could in, in experience and contacts and networking. Um, you know, there were so many opportunities to ask questions and, and talk to each other as well. And I, I certainly tried to share my experience with the other businesses and, and support them. I remember um, giving some advice about couriers and, you know, and, and warehousing, order systems, things like that. Um, so, yeah, it was, it, it was really good to learn, not just from the guys who came in to, to mentor and tutor us, but to learn from, from the other businesses as well. Um, and the lunches were pretty good, though. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, these guys have missed out on the lunches, so we, uh, we, we bribed them with a big box of brownies a couple of weeks ago oh. <laughs> by way of compensation. So it's a, it's a fascinating um, kind of retrospective. You, you used the word intensity for the, for the Monday morning session. So into, yeah, for, for everyone else's benefit, where we do Thursdays, they did Mondays, but it was still you know, every Monday, face-to-face, -face, in the same room, um, and, and it was, you know... Lincoln's not the greatest of places to get to for first thing in a Monday morning. Not that anyone was late every single week. <laughs> but, but you talked about the intensity of the support and you've kind of got a week's worth of support in half a day. Yeah. And it's so easy then trying to run your business in the other four and a half days or six and a half days as every small business knows because there are seven days in a week. How easy was it to implement that learning and embed it whilst trying to deliver a business, whilst trying to play catch up on the time that you've missed? And in your case, whilst trying to bring up a young daughter. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I'll be honest, it wasn't particularly easy, but the fact that we were given that network of support, um, gosh, I sent, I sent many emails with many questions to, to, you know, to, to tutors and mentors and, and, and I'm gonna say colleagues with the other small businesses as well. Um, you know, drop an email to get a question answered quickly and then go and implement what you were, what you were working on. And, it, it wasn't particularly easy, but I, I took loads of notes, absolutely loads of notes, even though you could, um, they, they would give you the information, they would give you that, that course, that pack to take away and, and, and do what you wanted with. But I took notes anyway, because I think it's easier to, you write down what's relevant to you. Whereas um, if you're just given a pack, a, a course pack, you have to go and look for what's relevant to you. So, so I wrote down lots and lots of relevant stuff and I still, every now and again, I'll still refer back to those notes um, and just check in on things. Um, but as far as, as far as implementing it, the, the most, the, the best part, the easiest way to implement for me, which I'm sure for the other businesses as well, um, was to be accountable to your mentor. Mm -hmm. So I had uh craig marsh who's uh, just i couldn't have got a better mentor and just going to speak to him every every couple of weeks and just you know craig would just ask me various questions and he'd just get to the bottom of what's what's holding my business back right now where am i spending my time in the business and where can my time be better um where will my time be more effective and more how can i save money how can i you know and there was there was one problem I'll never forget the first problem that I went to Craig with. It was, it was the simplest little thing, but I got myself in a right frenzy about it. And it, it's these little things, these ropes. So we sell these ropes as um, accessories on the website. Uh, and it, I, was, I was getting all wound up about how, we could, how I could send out the rope in a suitable package that was uh, at a suitable price um to customers and how i could fit that into my order fulfillment in the warehouse and it was just it was just a tricky little job that i've been trying that i've been stressing over and craig just helped me break it down um and helped me one of the easiest things the easiest thing i was i was worried about packing the ropes i was oh god it's got to be in a packaging i don't know what i'm going to do and craig helped me realize that if i supply the boxes and the ropes, if I'm paying for a pick and pack service, then the warehouse can pack them. So there's no need to pay twice for packing. Um, really simple, really simple and silly, staring me in the face, but I couldn't see it. Um, and so I went away and a couple of weeks later, I'd, I'd fixed that problem and I was moving on to the next one. 
So the accountability was um, was a big thing for me. Okay, it's really helpful. So you you referred to the notes that you took. One of the advantages these guys have over yours. So okay, you you gain in the face to face networking, and I've explained to these guys a few times that one of the really telling things for, for us was we'd come in on a Monday morning, walk into the room, and you'd all be sat in exactly the same places every week. Yeah. So you build your own little mini networks and clusters. I tried to, I tried to change tables now and again. Well, only because you were late, frankly. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but you, you referred to your notes. And one of the advantages these guys got, uh, and it, bring, it, it, it comes to a point that George has put in the, uh, in the chat, is these guys get the notes in the sense that if there was a handout for a particular workshop, they get that. But what they also get is they also get a recording of the workshop as it was live. So for, for a, a period of time, and, and to answer George's question indefinitely, probably yes, they'll be able to go back to the, to the, to the workshop and say, oh, hang on, I, I, heard, I learned this from Paula, or I learned this from Annabelle. What did she actually say? What was the book? What was the connection? And they've got that resource that they can go back to. Do you think that would have been useful for you and your cohort? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Maybe, um, maybe that's a learning point for us. Yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah, I don't know if you can, it, yeah, because it's, it's a bit like a podcast as well, isn't it? If you can, yeah. it, it, you can kind of have that playing in the background while you're, while you're working on something on your computer and listening out to the important, a bit, a bit like me writing down what's relevant you'll you kind of listen in the background and pick up on oh there it is that's the bit that i was looking for um yeah i think that's going to be really useful good so these these guys next thursday sorry i keep referring to you as these guys these these fabulous people from yorkshire uh next thursday they will be doing their live pitching um they're not necessarily pitching for money they're not necessarily pitching for anything but they do get the opportunity to pitch and understandably there's an element of nervousness an element of uncertainty an element of you know, I'm, I'm not worthy, although absolutely every single one of them are. How, how did you find the run up to the pitching and then the pitching itself? I mean, the environment was slightly different, but. Absolutely terrifying. Yeah, terrifying. And, and I'd pitched before. Um, I'd pitched before for the investment we briefly chatted about earlier. Um, yep. And that was a that was a hugely successful pitch. They um, bit my hand off <laughs> for, for what I was asking, which I now understand. Of course, they did. Um, and so, so I, I had one successful pitch behind me already. I hadn't pitched again um, for a couple of years until we until we got to ten by ten. It was even though you'd given us you'd given us all the tools, you'd given us all the information and the support that we needed for for to build us up to that day and that pitch is still absolutely terrifying. You've got all eyes on you and you're talking about something which is so personal and means so much to you. You, you want to, you know, there's so much you want to get across or certainly in my case, there was so much I wanted to get across in that short little snippet of time that you gave us. I was worried about missing things. And actually I think on the day I did miss something out. Um, for fear of running over time, but I I still got the message across. I still got the the main message across. But it's it's a terrifying experience. And and what I've learned, and I've pitched again since then. Obviously, you 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 saw my my super speed pitch <laughs> at the at the Dragons event. Um, but what I've learned, and what I'm always learning, is that these opportunities that come along, you've got absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. If, if all you're doing is putting your business out in front of some influential people, um, then how can you lose? You, you, there is nothing to lose. So you just need to throw yourself into it and go for it. And, and any little insecurities, any little worries that you've got like that, let your, your passion for your business swamp them and, and blow people away with what you can do and what you have done so far. You know, demonstrate how you brought your business from a concept or from from an idea you know from from a product from a service whatever it is demonstrate demonstrate your journey so far and your vision for the future and if you've got some passion and you've got some drive and you, and you get that across then whatever little insecurities and nervousness you're feeling inside it probably won't show because passion's gonna passion and 
and you know your enthusiasm will will wash over that don't worry about it go for it interesting so um <clears throat> i'm, I'm going to pick you up on a point there so you said it was terrifying pitching and you oh. had nothing to lose as the person hosting it was more terrifying and i had something to lose i nearly lost my hearing on that day you remember when i was shot Yes, Joe. <laughs> so, so Joe, one, one of our pitchers, she runs, um, she runs a, a gaming company that does uh, like murder mystery type games. And the opening gambit of her pitch, she pulled out a starter pistol, pointed it at my head and shot me. And yeah. I wasn't aware that that was coming. And it, yeah, it frightened the living bejesus out of me. But no, that, that, that's really good. Yeah. That's really good. So, so one of the funniest Joe, things I've, I've ever seen that was. <laughs> oh, brilliant! It's, I had Joe. Um, I had Joe do a party for us last year, actually, and uh, she did a brilliant job. Uh, in fact, she was Joe and Rachel were my winners. One of those were my winners. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. And yet, you were unanimously the judges' winner, which is good. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, that was that was um, that was eighteen months ago. What what? What out of 10 by 10 have you been able to take into your business in that 18 months? I mean, oh gosh, so much, so much. So uh, the first thing that, um, that, I can, that I can definitely say that I've taken is the contacts that you gave me are unreal. You know, I'm still in touch with Craig Marsh. Um, we have a chat now and again, and he's, he's very interested in the progress of the business. Um, I'm doing a lot more, we do a lot more work with the university now as well, um, partly through Craig, but partly through just gaining access to, to the various, the, the support that they can give us. Um, uh, yeah, so the contacts and the networking were immense. Um, the training itself, just giving us, you know, the various subjects that we spoke about, whether it be that, that we learned about, whether it be marketing or, or business planning or and accounting that was a good one do you remember that I do. <laughs> um uh you know the, the various aspects that we learned about just as i said before such, such an intensity of information such a such a pack of bang here's all this knowledge for you um you can't fail to to come away with with a better understanding of all those departments of your business and 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 a better understanding of how to tackle certain situations but but equally if you if you're trying to tackle a situation in working out a business model or a business plan and you, and you come across a problem you've got contact there already to go and drop an email to that guy who did the course on that day um and that's just invaluable absolutely invaluable so so i have been um i'm keeping in touch with people and you know uh as far as the small businesses there, I'm still in touch with uh, the likes of Joe and Rachel. Um, and yeah, we kind of still supporting each other. And yeah, it's, uh, yeah, contacts and training. Fantastic. So, what, what's the business been doing then? So how's, how's the business grown, changed, developed, progressed in, in the 18 months since you- Wow, okay. So, um, so trying to think back when we did when we did 10 by 10 we were in the were we in the 17 18 financial year yeah we were we we're in 17 18 financial year um and i think in my pitch i'd said something about a, a 90k turnover yeah. um we're looking at well we've, we've more than doubled that um and we're we were before covid we were on track for sort of a quarter of a million um the business has so so the, the prize money first of all i i had a, I um, a prize money oh sorry sorry so so the you got so, so, um, so for transparency's sake so the 10 by 10 we ran in lincoln was sponsored by some commercial partners who put up some cash prizes and incentive and um, because we didn't draw down public funding to get the program going so so where you get a shiny trophy ellen got some shiny currency I got, I got some, it was, it was, it was some useful funding, which, uh, enabled us to, so I had a, I had a project in mind, which was, um, a TV campaign with, uh, to run with horse and country TV. Um, and we wanted to make some, some shiny glossy videos, uh, showing how you could use the product, showing all the products in use with lovely horses and, 
and we we had a couple of avenues for endorsement in videos as well we could either go to uh, Jeff Billington who's a, a, an international show jumper who loves the products and has shown great interest in working with us or we could have gone to Bransby Horses which is a local Lincolnshire charity and um, they have a huge following and they um, and the work that they do is is quite it ties in very well with with our ethos and our products and so we went with we went with Bransby um, and we made some we made some fantastic short films with Bransby Horses with their we weren't we weren't officially allowed to say that they're endorsing the products but if you watch the films they are clearly endorsing the products <laughs> which is brilliant um, so we've got so, so the short films that we made, um, we, they are top-notch, real quality, lovely films, really friendly feeling, lovely films. Uh, and they are, they've been a huge asset to the business. So we've been putting these films out and they went out on Horse and Country TV. So um, when I started working with a, with a new warehouse, uh, for example, the guy, um, our, our manager uh, has a horse. And on our first meeting, when I went over there, he said, I saw you on the TV last night. <laughs> like, yes, yes, you did. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, so the brand awareness uh, that we got out of that was incredible. And off the back of that, when we, when I started Ten by Ten, I was just starting out to get some trade interest. And so the business was in. We we were establishing a, a really good brand name uh, within the B two C. Uh, so retail sales were good, customers were, were getting faith in the products, the brand had a good reputation, but to grow, we needed to get some, some trade sales. And so during 10 by 10, I got some, I got some good tips out of 10 by 10 on, on how, to, um, how to get these trade sales, or how to improve, increase the trade sales. Um, and so when we went away and made, the, uh, made these nice glossy video ads and put those out, um, we, we definitely saw the effect of the, the brand awareness was that trade sales increased quite dramatically. And so that is, um, that was how the business needed to go to grow. Um, so yeah, since, since 10 by 10, I'd say that our trade sales have increased a lot. We've also increased our international exposure as well. And that's been very much off the back of the films that we made. The films have gone out into the Netherlands, into Germany, Austria, France, um, all subtitled. So we've been um, we've been doing some great work with the with the brand awareness. And um, yeah, what else has been going on? I've, I've taken on I took on an intern from the university last year. Um, again, that was that came from ten by ten because speaking with um, people who people within the university I didn't really understand the internship scheme uh, and I didn't I didn't realize that there was support available mm -hmm. for um, for bringing a bringing an intern in and so, so I can I can provide some sort of training and experience for it for a young person from the university from the university um, and they can provide me with some support as well so that's a win-win situation so so Ollie came to work last He's been working for us just over a year now, so he's he's actually now done two internships, and, I, and I've had I've had plenty of support from the university, which is fantastic. And he's now got to a position where he knows the business so well, I can um, step back and take a bit of a break when I need to, and I can trust Ollie to to um, steer the ship, as it were, uh, where needed. Um, so yeah, that was that was a big bonus that came out of ten by ten, and I don't remember exactly who it was. It wasn't Craig. It was somebody. Somebody came um, on one particular day. I think it was one of the talks after the Andrew lunch. Stevenson. It was the it university. Was, yes, it was Andrew Stevenson, and he and he spoke about the internship scheme, and I thought, wow, I didn't know this was available. Um, so yeah, so it was it was through through that particular day that I got I got an intern, and he's still working for us. So. Excellent. Well, you, you, you'll be aware. So one of our mantras for the original pilot program in Lincoln was, um, yes, you have to commit. And that's, you know, that's, that's part of your side of the contract. But the other thing was, it has to be the same person, ideally, week in, week out. Because we, our, our belief was and still is that the 10 by 10 accelerator program is as much around personal development as it is around business development. So I, I, assuming that's true, or testing whether that's true, and this is unrehearsed, um, would, would you say that the 10 by 10 experience has made you a better leader, a better manager, a better driver of, of the business, as well as giving you the skills to deliver some of the business improvement? 
yeah definitely definitely and and i think um i think you're right in it in it being one constant person you um it, it the whole process was 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 building blocks um you know i was i was saying about how how you prepared us for the pitch so well because you you gave us all this information and um and, and training and by the time we actually reached the top reached the, the pitch day we had everything we already needed but but as individuals we had everything we already needed and i think had had it been certainly from in my business, if I'd been sending, you know, a couple of people in my place now and again, I would not have got out of it what I got. Um, but also it's, it's, I think a lot of it is about confidence um, and, and knowledge brings you confidence. So if you can um, build those blocks, so, so the 10 by 10, you know, over the 10 weeks, if you're, if you're building on your knowledge, um your confidence will be increasing and so yeah pitching is terrifying but you know think of everything you've learned think of all the all the information that you, you've now got and that will that will put you in a much better position to pitch than you were 10 weeks ago so um so yeah it's it for me very much personal development very much um, and also you know forging relationships with uh, with the other businesses which um I know you're quite limited in doing that online, but you you still be able to. I'm, I'm sure you're still sort of striking up some rapport with with each other. And oh, you uh, should you should honestly, Ellen, you should see the the banter in the in the chat in Slack and the abuse I get from some of these people. <laughs> but, yeah, and that's and that's great, and that's and that's really important as well. That's um, you know, that sort of that that feeling. Um, you know, you're all in it together. I don't think you'd get that if you were, you know, different people every week and yeah. Yeah. So it's okay. F final one from me. Um, and, and, and it's almost like it was engineered this way and I'd love to say it was, but it wasn't. Um, we, we started this conversation. In fact, we started our relationship when somebody you trusted, uh, so a solicitor, um, referred you to somebody he trusted, AKA me. And then we, built a relationship that I hope is still built on trust. How, uh, two, I go two, two parts to the question. How important is it to get trusted advice? And second, how easy is it to find advice that you can trust? Oh, no such thing um, as an easy question. How important is it? First of all, uh, yep. you can't, you can't, do you know what the, the strange thing is you can't put a price on trusted advice but the most trusted advice won't cost you anything um or shouldn't cost you anything um and that's that's what i found personally because uh if somebody has a if somebody has a vested interest in what you're doing uh as as the um board of uh investors did when when i met you russell and sought your advice uh, I was not going to get good advice from those guys. They wanted to buy into my business and um, it took a, a very, a very good lawyer um, to gently help me understand that this was not the best way um, and introduce me to you, Russell. So trusted advice is so important. I can't, you, you get to a stage with a small business. I know from experience, you get to a stage where, um, when you start talking money and equity, what you've personally built with your blood, sweat and tears suddenly becomes worth something. And I remember when these, um, when this board of investors offered me X thousand pounds, I was blown away at the thought that my business could be worth this. Wow, my business is worth this. This is incredible. And actually, in, in, in hindsight, I can now, well, we now know, Russell, that, that they undervalued my business. Yeah. Absolutely. Your business is, is worth, oh, your business is worth what someone will pay for it and someone will pay for your, for your passion and your insight and your vision and, you know, and, and so, so these guys were not giving me great advice. Um, my lawyer gave me great advice and then recommended somebody else in the form of Russell to give me some great advice. And so uh, my skin was saved from, from uh, 
a bad decision. No, and then finding that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so trickle net's still here. Woo! So go, <laughs> to, go to the harder half of the question then. How, how about, um, how easy is it to find good advice? Because you, you mentioned this, you know, there's loads of advice out there. How do you, how do you sift the wheat from the chaff? There's, there is loads of advice out there. I think, um, as, I, as I touched on earlier, I, I think personally, the most trusted advice won't necessarily cost you anything. Um, and the most trusted advice or the person who gives you the most trusted advice doesn't have a vested interest in your business, but they will have experience that, that perhaps you, you don't have. Um, finding that advice, I think is really difficult. I think I was, um, it, it cost me, cost me a lot of money to find a great lawyer to change my mind and put me on the right track. Um, although that money spent on the lawyer was very well spent um, because ultimately it's, it saved me. It's probably saved the business to be fair. Um, and since then the, the support just, just putting me on the right track and put me in touch with the right people um, has has brought a, a wealth of information and networking and support and people and you know the 10 by 10 course and all the other training and and all the free stuff that I've had and you know the people I've met and it, just incredible incredible support but it I didn't have access to it before I didn't know it was there I didn't know it was there and I, and I as small businesses how how are we going to find that support how are we going to find that trusted advice I, I don't know. I don't know. Aside from you've got to go and get it. You've got to go and find it yourself. Um, and so you need a bit of gumption. You need a bit of, um, you do need to, to kick yourself and go searching, go find it, go speak to people, network, um, you know, and um, yeah, and find your way. Okay. That's really helpful. So, so quick question from George. Um, so we, yeah, our, our friends from Nottingham, you, uh, you declined their very generous offer of investment. Um, have you considered taking equity investment since? I've considered it, but I, um, I, I have a more realistic value on my business now. Um, and I have a, I have a vision in my business to, um, we're, we're going to be a global equestrian brand. There's no doubt about that. That's the way we're heading. We're a very niche product. Uh, but we're also, we, we produce very niche products, but we're also, very necessary in today's world with domestic horses our products are um extremely important i'd say for health and welfare um so the products the products are going to go global so with that in mind i would consider selling equity um but it wouldn't be cheap and it would have to be above all it would have to be the right people yeah. and i think the right people i think that's where the that's where the problem is that's where the that's the difficult bit, finding the right people who, who share your vision and, um, and who understand you and, and, and understand how much work you put into it to get where you are. Um, yeah, and, and finding the right people is, is nearly impossible. And if yeah. you can't find the right people, in my experience, just carry on doing what you're doing. <laughs> I, I think that's I think that's tremendous advice, and it's a it's a good insight, and it actually brings the conversation full circle to where to where we came in. Um, George just says, "Don't worry, he wasn't about to offer to buy your business." Oh. <laughs> although, although interestingly, further up the chats, he's I think he's got two sisters who've who've both used your products in their in their stables. So there we go. Oh, fantastic! Yay! So. If, if nobody else has got any burning questions and I'm not seeing anything in the chat, can I just say a huge thank you to you, Ellen, for, for coming along. You're welcome. Um, just for everyone else's benefit, I haven't bribed her. I didn't pump primer. I didn't ask her to say nice things about us. Um, and she didn't get any brownies. Um, no, so, I didn't. So that was, didn't. that was, that was, um, yeah, word of the day. That was authentic. Um, so hopefully, hopefully, uh, you found that useful. Hopefully it's given you a bit of inspiration that somebody who was in your place last week and bricking it, uh, last year, sorry, and bricking it. Um, Ra Rachel Rhodes says, can you please do her pitch for her? The answer, Rachel, is no. <laughs> Told you. Honestly, Thank guys, just throw yourselves into it. You've got yep. nothing to lose. What's, what's the phrase we, phrase we used in Lincoln? Put your big girl pants on, suck it up yeah. and just do it. Yeah. Crack on with it. Brilliant. Give it, give it everything.
Thanks so I don't much, know who Alex. Big Girl Panther Russell has been using, though. <laughs> <laughs> you, right. You're going to get muted now. Um, yeah, on, on behalf of everyone here and the people who are going to end up watching it on recording, I, I should have mentioned to Ellen beforehand that we've, we've got another mini cohort um, who, who just, just see these programmes through the recording version. So we don't, we don't give them access to the live stuff. Can I just say a huge thanks for coming along? For giving, oh, you're welcome. Giving of your time again. Um, and, and, and obviously for singing our praises. The check's in the post, as they say. <laughs> um, for everyone else, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.